Hello and welcome to Hot Issues. My name is Johnny Hughes, guest presenting for your regular host, Stephen N.T. Our guest this afternoon is one of Ghana's finest, if you like, political scientists who has risen through the ranks to etch his name in the annals of history. He's vociferous, he's resilient, and is a strong-willed individual. Professor Ransford Jampo is my guest. Prof, good to have you. Happy New Year. We have not met this year. Well, um, I'm How are you these days? I am fine. Very fine. How is suspension treating you? Six months of suspension. Oh, it's okay. I don't want to comment about that. I think there's no finality to the matter. And how to get to see so much of my history. I don't want to make it more complicated for us. But it's a case of finality. Do you insist that you were not guilty? The university's decision to suspend you points to the fact that perhaps you're guilty and that you brought the reputation of the institution to disrepute of, and broke the code of conduct that you of all persons should have known. My lawyers have said extensively, you know, made extensive remarks about this and I don't want to talk about it. I think there are other important issues of national importance <coughs> that we have to focus on. And so um, I thank God for keeping me up to this time. And I don't want to talk about, make more pronouncements or comments about this, especially public. But how has the documentary affected you? Oh, it strengthened me. I've been fine. I mean, lessons have been learned. How do you intend to survive in the six months? I don't want to comment further. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm interested. I want to know. I, want I mean, to you're, you're a strong voice on the political landscape. Uh, okay. with media wants resource persons yes. for uh, political scientists yes. to speak with. Yes. And you're the man we call. Yes. Within the six months, will we see you actively? Yeah, why not? I mean, that. I'm, that's why you're here. I mm. mean, I, I will still do what I have to do for God and country. Okay. And it's okay. Let's not talk so much about me. I want to talk about issues of national importance. I know. Uh, so um, let's let's for, let's bygone bygone lessons have been learned. And like I said, I don't want to make any public pronouncement about some of these. Do things. you have regrets? Uh, no. No regrets. No. Okay. What would be your assessment, a general assessment, first of all, of the Nana Kufuado led government? He's, he's in this fourth year, the elections are in December. What, what would be your assessment of the government? Well, if you talk about governance, um, especially good governance, we are talking about the effective and efficient management of scarce resources mm -hmm. of the people, such that this management practice translates into developmental outcomes that can be tangibly reflected in the lives of the ordinary people. Right. And so, um, uh, recently we heard the Vice President out there accounting to the people with respect to what they have done, the situation have done. Soon afterwards, we heard um, other people from the opposition side trying to controvert the kinds of achievement that had been articulated to the people. My right. own take mm. on um, this situation is that the achievements under good governance mm. must be tangible mm. and they must reflect in the lives of the people. So in this regard, mm. it is not what the NDC people are saying that okay. matters. It's not what the MP people are mm. saying that matters. Mm. It's what the ordinary people say, you know, ordinary Ghanaians, what they are saying, mm. that should be of utmost importance and concern to every policy. What country. have you picked from on the streets? Well, I've not spoken to people on the street of, okay. of, of, of late, but okay. I think that um, any um, simple survey or research would um, be able to reveal what the ordinary people are saying. Mm. And so when we are talking about governance, every fair assessment of governance mm. of a country must give credence to the views and voices of the ordinary people. I think that is what... In, in December, the president scored his governance 72% uh, at the press encounter. And at the recent um, the results fair by the vice president, the, government, the vice president scored the government 8, 78%. What is that? Is there any truth you would want to put to it? Well, like, like I said, it is good as far as in terms of political communication, a government is supposed to be able to communicate effectively what it has achieved. Okay. And my problem with the ruling MPP is that um, they have been unable to adequately communicate what they stand for and what they, they have achieved. They talk about free SHS, uh, one uh, district, yeah, one factory, yeah, one I village, mean, one yeah, dam, so planting for food and yeah, jobs. They have so many of these things, mm. but my point is that communicating it effectively has been a difficult. And okay. so oftentimes, it's only when you have the vice president mounting the platform to talk about this that people really would listen mm. and all that. And so it is good for you to politically communicate right. and to communicate your own achievement mm -hmm. and to score mm -hmm. um, yourself. I mean, you 
you would also have to do some assessment. Mm. Um, um, Sukrit says an unexamined life is not worth living. And so if a government decides to examine its own achievement and articulate um, its own achievement, it is okay. But for me, mm -hmm. as, as a political scientist right. and as a governance person, what is of utmost importance is how the ordinary people would rank their rate. So the government, for example, talks about free SHS, that parents are being saved monies, children are in school, and they should be applauded for it in spite of the many bottlenecks that we have seen with the implementation of the policy. What are your own thoughts about free SHS? No, um, it is not wrong for the government to talk about this. But like I said, mm. it is also important for us to go and get the views of beneficiaries and parents okay. um, as to whether they think they are benefiting properly or not. There may be challenges um, of the free SHS. Mm -hmm. it's, it's an important social intervention. I have my own issues with it. Right. But what are your well, issues with it? Well, I, I thought that making it so blanket mm -hmm. for people who even have money and you know, um, not to pay is mm -hmm. something that um, uh, makes us needlessly um, dissipate um, public resources. Okay. Let's try to find some ways and means of identifying those who genuinely cannot pay. I was mm -hmm. a student of this University of Ghana mm -hmm. um, um, when we went on the Mobawa struggle right. in 2000. Um, the university came out with an intervention that identified brilliant mm -hmm. but needy students who could not pay right. um, fees and then they dealt with them. And mm -hmm. so my point is, yes, free SHS is a good um, social intervention, but um, um, let it focus especially on those who do not have okay. and so that we can um, um, allow those who can pay to pay so that um, we can insist or improve the quality, you know, at that um, at this, um, SHS level. But the point is that mm. every so every new social intervention would have its teaching challenges, right. and it is believed that as you allow it to uh, be implemented, I mean, policymakers will be able to do um, evaluation monitoring, and they will be able to fashion out interventions that would ensure mm. that. It delivers um, to better the lot of the people. There's now double track. The NDC says, we warned you, we told you that you need to do this gradually and not instantaneously. And that's why we have these problems. Children sleeping, sleeping outside. Uh, they can't find dining halls. Uh, bad food as Piak has, has been able to bring out there. So they say the MPP rushed into implementing free SHS. Do you side with that analogy? Well, let, let's, let, let me not talk about um, partisan... Um, 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 this, uh, party but this is PIAC. This is partisan, Public Interest partisan, and Accountability um, Committee. So PIAC. 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 Right. PIAC. NDC has spoken, but PIAC has also spoken. Well, the point is that, you see, again, like I said, I do not think that the ruling party has been able to explain some of these things effectively. Recently, somebody explained the double track system mm. to me. And in my view, then that's a brilliant idea. Okay. If you have so many people wanting to go to... Um, a secondary school mm -hmm. and that the infrastructure there would not be enough to be able to house all of them mm -hmm. and he said so let's have a shift system so that you go um, um, this time and then the other person goes I think it broadens education right. um, to people who want to benefit from it and so it is up to um, the implementers of the policy and the framers of the policy mm -hmm. to be able to get um, on their finger to the ABCs mm -hmm. of some of these things mm -hmm. and um, articulate or communicate them effectively so that it, mm. it, it, it gathers the needed understanding. As One of the key things that I've been spoken about about this Akufuado led government is the number of ministers that uh, the president appointed and the output that's coming out from the quarters of uh, a house that says we have the men. Have you been satisfied with the numbers, the output, and the men in charge? And if you like well, women, I think um, <coughs> I've spoken extensively about um, 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 the number of ministers we have. I spoke about the first um, regime I scrutinized mm. was um, um, the GA Kufour regime. Right. But the reason why I did that was that GA Kufour critiqued Jerry Rollins mm -hmm. and likened, compared Ghana to America, right. saying that look at a small um, um, country like Ghana, we have 88 ministers mm. under Jerry mm. Rollins. Mm. So he made an issue out of it. But when he came, he increased the number. And then when he was squeezed, he said, well, when he was in opposition, he didn't know that um, it was going to be like that. And also, he felt uh, a lot of wealth had been created and so mm -hmm. he needed extra hands. But he tacitly conceded that um, mm -hmm. um, the number of the size of the government was big. Um, after Mills came, um, he reduced the size of the government to around 75. Right. I thought it was not good enough. Mm -hmm. um, Mahama also um, showed it up 
Um, it was over 99 right. if you add the three or five wise men exactly <laughs> <laughs> to it. And then I think uh, President Akufuado's own is the biggest in the history of um, Ghana's right. public or uh, in the political history of Ghana. You see, the idea of efficiency, when I mm. define good governance, I told you that it's it's about one's ability to effectively and efficiently manage scarce resources. Mm. You understand? So the idea of efficiency is about using fuel to achieve more. Mm. Okay, but it's like now we are using more and I don't think we are achieving um are we much. achieving little? No, I think we are using we are using too many manpower and um, um I don't think um if you want to juxtapose So if I ask you do you feel the impact of, of this government in your life as a citizen first of all not as a professor of political science as an ordinary citizen who cooks who eats who goes to town who hobnobs with people are you feeling the impact? Well, there are certain areas that you can feel the impact. There are certain areas that um, you see that we are stagnating and it's, it's like it used to be and all that. Um, 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 the, I mean, people talk about utilities, people talk about um, fuel pricing, people um, talk about cost of living okay. and all that. But you see, the point is it will always be hard. We have, to, we have to understand as a people, I mean, some of the determinants or factors that makes your uh, imposes hardship, some are itself inflicted some to uh, external beyond the control of governments and all that and so for me um, these are not things that I really want to uh, what, make. What with. number of ministers would you recommend? For Ghana? Yes. A minimum of 25. Why? I mean, the country's population is too small, and we are not we are not that advanced. We are not. Japan has 17 ministers. I think Britain, if you look at the number of ministers, they are less than 20. If you go to South Africa, you wouldn't get 40 and all that. I mean, these are populous countries, and these are far richer countries and all that. And so the idea of efficiency is right. to use little mm. to achieve more. And what really do ministers do? Tell me. If we really have an effective administrative machinery of the state, when we talk about administrative machinery of the state, we are talking about a civil service. Right. They do everything. Mm. I mean, what do ministers know that they were not taught? You know, our, our constitution says to be the, the only requirements you, know, you don't need an expertise in an area to go ahead that ministry. Right. The only area you require an expertise to go ahead is the AG's department. Right. If you want to, you are going to be attorney general, then you in should be a lawyer. Background okay? of law. uh -huh. right. But apart from that, Kwame Adukufo was reputed to be one of the first brilliant um, best ministers. Defense but he was a defense right. minister. He wasn't a soldier. Right. And so the point is that you don't need an expertise in an area to go ahead that ministry. Mm -hmm. The idea is that when you go, you sit on the laps of the civil servants there right. and then they teach you mm -hmm. what you have to do what you don't have to do mm -hmm. and if you're a good listener and a learner you'll be able to um, excel and so if you go to countries like italy mm -hmm. where coalitions easily break down mm -hmm. sometimes they can run without a government or without ministers right. for about three months it's because their administrative machinery of the state works and so the point is that if we do not believe in our administrative machinery of the state, mm. we must do more to overhaul it. You see, our civil service, um, service is bedeviled with so many challenges. You see, one of the challenges mm. is colonial legacy. A colonial legacy that says that Abanye Juma Yem Okay. okay. Um, one of the um, initiatives and interventions of Kwame Nkrumah to ensure that we kick away the colonial master was to um, encourage the civil servants to be lackadaisical and not to kill themselves, mm. you know, um, to help the um, colonial right. you know, government. If you work well, then the colonial government will feel comfortable to stay. The, the civil so, servants are fired back. They say they work well. <laughs> we have a certain stereotype. Well, towards well, them. No, no, I don't know whether. Go to the various ministries, departments, and agencies around this time and see. You see people working low to people pretending to be working and government pretending to be paying them. And all. So my point is that um, the, the solution to this particular problem of big government does not lie in we trying to recreate another civil service by way of having more um, uh, many ministers the solution lies in we trying to overhaul okay. the administrative machinery right. of the state and ensure that it is capable of delivering mm. to to the mandate given to it by the German sociologist we call Max Max Weber. Max Weber. I mean, he, he, he spoke about the ideal type of the civil bureaucracy that is supposed to um, serve as an effective and efficient mm. administrative machinery of the state. At the moment, the kind of civil service we have has been polar, has been politicized, mm. and you have so many square pegs in round holes. 
every regime that comes want to pack its own mm. you know um, people there and so a new regime that comes say well we cannot work with you because you are made up of ndc people or mm. mpp people so what they try to do is to create another mm. form of civil service that is that's why you have so many ministers so right. the minister has two deputies and then all of them they may have consultants right. and then they may have advisors to the consultants and all that it's an attempt to recreate a civil service within the civil service interesting what's your thoughts about how the city has been managed against major trading currencies uh, the vice president uh, in opposition spoke about how they were going to turn the city around to make it stronger now we're told that it is not doing too good, in spite of a recent, uh, you know, survey that says that it's, it's showing up a bit, but it's still beyond five CDs, if you ask me. Per I must, dollar. I must, I must let you know about my deficiency in economics. Yes, yeah. I worked with the Institute of Economic Affairs for 14 years, mm. but I was with their governance, you know. Um, unit and so I'm not so much of an economics okay. person but the point is that generally we all know that um, the city is not doing um, mm. um, very well um, in, as it compares to other major um, currencies and um, um, people are saying that mm. the vice president made a lot of promise that these things will be dealt with and all that and people are not too happy okay. about that. Um, we, I know that some of the issues or some of the factors are beyond you know, mm. the shores of Ghana and all that. And so it's a challenge that government will have to um, tackle and tackle very well. Okay. This is Hot Issues. We'll take a break. When we return, my guest will be Professor Jampo. We'll ask him about his own thoughts regarding the new voters register, the issues happening on the political landscape, the advisory committee that the Electoral Commission has put together of eminent persons, and many matters arising. Stay on this. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Hot Issues. My name is Johnny Hughes. My guest is Professor Ransford Jampo. Prof, before the break, I announced that we'll talk about the voters' register. There's been a lot of hue and cry about it. Consultations, a committee of eminent persons, uh, political parties saying yes, no, and should we, should we not. You have had an opportunity to work with the IEA before. IEA is very instrumental in our political, on our political landscape. What are your views about this call for a new constitution, a new, voters matters, a, a new voters register, matters arising? Well, I, I think um, there are so many things that run through my mind when you talk about um, a new voters register. And, for example? Um, no, no. Basically, I, I, I think we will have to desist or stop the practice of every now and then you have uh, the ruling party supporting a position of the electoral commission, the opposition party um, taking a position against the position of the electoral commission. Is it, it is, is it too coincidental? It is, no, it is, it is not good. Mm. It is not good. Every now and then you have opposition party opposing everything the electoral commission wants to do, ruling party supporting what... Why electoral, is that? It is not, I don't know, but um, um, we should know that no electoral commission has what it takes to rig election in favor of any political party. Really? Otherwise, mm. the NDC shouldn't have been in opposition now. And so it is important that political parties grasp this and know what it takes to win an election and focus their attention there. You see, winning an election requires vigilance. Okay. Okay. And so, uh, in the lead up to the 2016 elections, there were agitations for fresh voter voters register. Right. Okay. Those who were saying that we needed uh, the, the voters register was um, to quote my teacher and um, Professor Michael, he, he was saying that it was like um, um, a, um, sand that has been poured into Gary. Mm. Trying to do anything with it will not be possible. So right. we needed a completely new voters register. But the, we held elections and um, the, the election delivered monument, monumental victory to the MP. Do we need a new voters register? Um, in my view, let's look at the arguments. Tell me. Okay. Um, the Electoral Commission, mm. um, headed by my former boss, Mrs. G. Mensah, has been put out a case right. that there is the need for a fresh voters um, register. And if you listen to their reasoning, um, they have a point. Mm. If you listen to what they are saying, they're saying that the biometric devices, you know, cannot withstand the kind of pressure that is put on the machine mm. in major electoral contestation. There's been argument that um, we use it for referendum, mm. but referendum was for the creation of just six right. um, um, regions. We use it for um, local district, level, district elections. level elections, but you know the participation in that election. But you're going to go into a major electoral battle, and so you can't 
put they can they don't trust is it not know, too close for comfort to be demanding for these things in an election year well so um let me develop my point so they have a case mm. okay they have a case um for making that demand or saying that we need a new voters register but those who have also opposed mm. um, um, um the call for a new voters register also have a case and they are looking at time and let me tell you something tell what, me. what a lot of people do not know i've heard the argument being banded around that um we prepared um, the 2012 um, vote, um, the current voters register in an election year in 2012. That's, that's a I, fact. And I'm, it's a fact, but I'm saying those who are banding that around, um, that argument, um, have either forgotten our history, What's or, the history? Or, or they are deliberately deciding not to remember. What's the history? In the lead up to 2012 election, mm. we, that was the first time we introduced our biometric um, right. um, voters right. register. And if you could remember, because it was new, mm. okay, people approached the process with some form of suspicion and trepidation and everybody thought that um, the more you police it um, the more you'll be able to um, prevent um, um, undesirable people from mm. registering mm. and all that mm. so in the lead up to the 2012 election because of the introduction of that you know electoral activity there was so much tension chaos and to the point that people said well this is just voters registration mm. and look at how tense the situation is people died right. property you know got destroyed and there were so many instances that um, uh, you could describe as you know um, 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 casualties mm. you know and all that so these tendencies ushered us into the eight month election petition. You know, the right. ground had been prepared. That, right. Well, <laughs> um, we lost and um, a, a political party lost and said, mm. well, um, because of the tension that had happened there, you know, the conditions were ripe for mm. them to do whatever, mm. you know, they did. Yes, they resorted to due process of law, you commend them and all that. But you agree with me that within that eight month period, we were all sitting on a time bomb. Okay. And I'm saying that the eight-month period, the antecedent of the eight-month period, mm. election petition period, had to do with the voters register okay. that we introduced in that election mm. year. So I'm talking to you now as a member of the Electoral Reforms Committee. Okay. Now, when we met, at, when um, after the election petition, okay. um, we ele an Electoral Reforms Committee was constituted by the Electoral Commission. Right. And I was a member. Okay. Okay. Now, one of the proposals that we made for electoral reform okay. was that the Electoral Commission must always publish ahead, ahead of time its calendar of activities okay. um, so that political parties will be aware. Right. And the Electoral Commission must ensure that as much as it can, as much as possible, it should not engage the election year you know, uh, with so many election activities. Mm. And so you should free the election year so that political parties can go about campaigning and then we would concentrate only on the election. And Dr. G. Mesa that, knows this. Well, yeah. As a former part, head of the IEA. It's part of the electoral reforms, uh, electoral reforms proposal. Right. And so I expect that um, 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 the electoral commission have a copy of right. that uh, of that of right. that report but so that is would it. you so, know why no, it's no, not no, being no, implemented no, no, no. I am, i'm curious to learn that if a meeting was held you saw the challenges recommendations were made and now we're, we're not no, see, there, there, we there have are not so seen many, the recommendations there are so before. many proposals for electoral reforms that have not been implemented note this when we submitted our 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 report i think um, um early part of 2016 okay um dr Afarijan was exiting okay so she exited handed over to charlotte was okay. who took some time to settle right around the time he, the, the, the successful conduct of the 2016 um, election Delicious. was as a result of vigilance and political miracle. It was not as a result of the implementation of any proposal. Now, now we have a so committee me, of let, eminent. Let, 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 let me finish right. with what I'm mm. saying on that. And so no electoral reforms proposal you know were implemented before the 20, um, 2016 elections now soon after 2016 elections i thought that we we're going to implement electoral reforms proposal mm. but then um um Salato say exited now mrs mensa has just come in mm. she's also now trying to settle and then we have another so we have not been able to actually implement all the um, the proposals Written for electoral, electoral right. reforms so um it is possible that um, this is only one of the numerous proposals for electoral okay. reforms. I'm sure they've not found time to look at it, but I must make IPAC the point. Is, IPAC is there. Uh, we now have a committee of eminent persons by the Electoral Commission. So the point they, I want they, to make they is have that all at one point have had a privilege to see these proposals you're talking no, about. No, the point, that, well, I mean, uh, Ghanaians are always uh, politicians and political party uh, elites are always thinking about what is current. And so sometimes some of these issues, they, they, mm. they tend to forget. And all that. But the point I'm trying to make is well. that at, the, at, the, at this particular point in time, there is a stalemate. 
Um, some people are saying we would avoid it at all, we we'll prevent it at all costs. Some are saying we need it. Do we need a new we register? Have to, we have to do it. What I'm thinking about is that we would have to engage the activities and services of the eminent advisory committee more. Okay. You do not bring a solution to this impasse by um, just one meeting, one IPAC meeting. That doesn't qualify and for so, consultation. And so, no, I, I think that they should do more, reach out to people behind the scenes because we have only one Ghana. You don't want a situation where, well, we'll need it, uh, we'll, we'll support it, we won't support it. It degenerates into people go on demonstration. Okay. If you don't take care of somebody, there is violence and all that, there's reprisal attacks. And we don't want that. And so my point is that the eminent advisory committee mm. must intervene to do more to ensure that we reach some form of consensus. What, what more can they do? Well, I'm saying they are meeting the parties. You cannot. They met them once right. at, an, at, at an IPAC setting, right. and I'm saying that that one meeting is not enough. It's not enough. Let them go do more. I mean, sometimes it is. It is, it is nice to show people that you respect them by going to them, mm. okay, behind the scenes and engaging them privately. I tell you that these political party elites, they are friends if you see them behind the scenes. One, Let's one talk party about party. winner takes all. It's been a big issue for, for us. Uh, I met Justice VCRC Crab, bless his soul, who spoke about the fact that the winner takes all won't take us anywhere. Um, I know you have spoken about it a few times, but it continues to go on. Uh, NDC wins power. Everybody else has to be in NDC or you get nothing at all. MPP wins power, same old thing. What do you make of it? Well, it's bad. When we talk about winner takes all politics, it's important we distinguish it from winner takes all as a formula for selecting leaders. Okay. Winner takes all politics is the practice of state capture okay. and partisan monopolization of resources, power, opportunities by the ruling party mm. and its cronies or supporters to the exclusion of all other Ghanaians. Right. Not to even talk about only the opposite, but all the Ghanaians. So what that means is that to be able to be included, mm. you must belong to the political party. Right. If you are not support, mm. uh, you, you are not in support of that political party, then people look at you with a certain kind right. of eye. It was a problem when um, 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 President Mills and um, um, John Mahama mm. were in power. And so I remember in 2013, right. um, I was part of the IEA uh, Winner Takes World Advisory um, Committee right. that went nationwide mm -hmm. um, doing consultations about it and then making proposals for reform. Right. And um, it is still a challenge with this particular administration too. And I don't know why we have not been able to do... Well, there were, there's been some intervention. All regimes do it. Um, mm -hmm. What they do is that um, as a kind of as little solution to it. They try to look for people from the other divide and then pacify them by giving their points. They right. before look for some people. I think Mel uh, Mr. Indu, Dr. Indu, did some, yeah. um, something. Mm. And I think appointment of um, the Do minister, Dr. Uh, um, um, uh, ambassador at large. Plenty I mean, it's, but mm. it's 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 a drop in the ocean as right. far as the solution to winner takes up. What's the concerned. solution? What? No, there are so many manifestations of winner takes up. Tell me, what's the solution? No, the solution is that for, we have to govern in a manner that brings inclus inclusivity. The solution also mm. has to do with we doing all we can to amend or to 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 revisit our constitutional review right. you know you know process uh, let's enough. talk about galamse it's been a trending issue the missing excavators the impact on society uh, the long talk the president putting his job on the line and uh, the videos that came out they will see video i'm sure you've seen it what are your own thoughts about it as a ghana bar well as a ghana bar because there's nothing political science about it. <laughs> all right the, the point is for a president to say that I'm putting my, my presidency on the line right. means that he meant business. Do you uh, see business being done? Um, the point is also that sometimes a president would mean well, but the people he may be working with may fail. So he should fire may them. Fail, may, fail, may fail him. So he should fire and them. So, uh, wait, not all of them. Some are doing good work, and so there is a need for the president to reassess the fight against Galamsey. Look at those who are really committed to that fight. Maintain them. In these uh, final days of the Akufuado led government, this is my final question to you. What would you like to see from the point of governance and democracy? What would you like to see from the quarters of the president? It is going to be a heated and tense election. The president has already promised that um, the elections will be peaceful, free and fair. I expect him 
to give meaning to that and to do all the things that will douse divisive flames. Mm. Everything that inflames passions, we should deal with, uh, we should um, 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 abandon. And then also let us try to have a credible platform that would serve, that would provide the avenue mm. for peaceful contest of ideas. Okay. Our politics must not be a contest of scandals, mm. but there should be a peaceful contest of ideas okay. in the lead up to 2012, uh, 2020 elections so that we will not be insulting ourselves, okay. we wouldn't be talking about non-bread and butter issues, but we will be talking about ideas. Now, you see, what is going on is that if I have a scandal, I keep it. Next week, I'll release. If you have a scandal, you keep it. The following week, you release to equalize or to cancel right. out. Our politics and in the electioneering campaign, if it thrives on scandals, would always be playing on the emotional keyboards of people, and there may be uh, passion, it may inflame passions, and we may be plunging um, our nation into chaos. And so, let us do all we can. It's unfortunate, we don't hear, we, 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 we I'm, I'm thinking, our appeal, the idea is still mm -hmm. there. If that platform is there, that platform of presidential debate is there, I would appeal to them that they should reactivate it and then let there be town halls and a healthy contest of ideas so that we'll be discussing the issues mm. and we'll not be discussing, you know, um, scandals and who is able to insult, you know. So, someone says those who are supposed to raise the issues are now being co-opted into government. Uh, Jean Mensah, IEA boss, is now at the Electoral Commission. Franklin Kujo in Money Africa, a very strong voice think tank, is now uh, looking at how to fix the CD dollar issues and so many other examples. Would you say that government is trying to grab the head of the snake, cut it so that the bodies well, become co cooptation, cooptation, cooptation is one form of participation. It has its strengths, it has its weaknesses. Um, one of the strengths is that if you think that um, X can do the work to help Ghana, mm. and so you want to bring the person to your fold to help you know, advance the course of Ghana, I mean, it helps all of us. And so if Jimensa can do something to better the lot of Ghana or to improve our electoral politics, if Franklin um, Kujo can do something to fix certain challenges and so government brings him on, it is good. But at the same Does time... Does it help checks and balances? Well, at the same time, mm. at the same time, if you co-opt, um, you weaken the bigger organize no the organization to mm. which you know um, they were seven right. it's like ultra or wuti anaka and mm. so once you co up their heads then their organizations you know would also bleed and all team. that and so then you you the countervailing authority is blocked when i say countervailing authority i'm saying there must always be a power that counters the exercise of power you understand mm. and so once a government is in place other avenues that serves as countervailing authority, particularly civil society, must be allowed, they must be respected, they must be, they must be tolerated to be able to keep government in check. Otherwise, if nobody checks executive power, then the president becomes a political king Kong. Okay. Political king Kongism and democracy are not bad friends. Professor Jampo, thank you very much. Are we pleasure. seeing you in the classroom shortly? Um, after everything. After everything. Yes. Thank you very much for your time. And that's our time here on Hot Issues. My name is Johnny Hughes. Many thanks to Professor Jumpo. Thanks for watching. See you another time.